today I'm gonna be talking about Dracula by Bram Stoker, which I have in this incredible Barnes and Noble's edition that has black pages and this spine. This book is an epistolary novel. Did I say that right? Which means that it is made up of letters and notes and telegrams between all of the characters, and then you get to see how all of their perspectives are woven together. This book starts with Jonathan Hawker, who is a young British solicitor who is visiting Transylvania to visit Count Dracula because Count Dracula wants to buy property in England, which is enthralling, I know. But what young Jonathan Harker has not realized yet, despite every warning from any person he encountered in Transylvania is that he has entered Count Dracula's castle of death and he is writing to his fiancée Mina and he starts to realize that he is not a guest. You don't think this book is gonna be scary at first because in the first couple of chapters you just get all the regular vampire tropes that you're really used to like he only is awake at night he never eats or drinks. You can't see him in the mirror. He freaks out when people bleed around him. And it's like, oh, pff, seen this before, this isn't scary. And then I was like, check yourself. This is like pretty much the original and where all of this came from. So just sit down. But by the end of the first section, oh my God, some spooky shit happens. And this continues throughout the entire story. Because not only do we have the death castle of Dracula, we also have the small, creepy seaside village of Whitby, and we also have just an insane asylum, because that was a really casual setting uh, in Victorian Gothic horror. Gary, like how you think the X-Files is gonna be? Like you're like, lol, this was made in the 90s, like this is not gonna be scary. And then it's the scariest thing of your entire life. I didn't think that I was gonna be tainted by the oversaturation of vampires and such in popular culture as of recent, but I definitely was because I thought that Count Dracula could be a chill dude. Like you know when you have those antagonist or evil characters where they're clearly bad and they do bad things, they might be misunderstood, maybe not, but they're really chill and funny about it so you're like, okay, we let's work with this. He is just straight up evil and I respect that. So in the next part, after Jonathan Harker, we move to his fiancée Mina and her best friend Lucy, who are currently residing in the seaside village of Whitby, where they shouldn't be, because it's terrifying there. There are also three other gentlemen, uh, who were all potential suitors for Lucy, and all ended up proposing to her on the same day. So the first is Arthur, who is your basic white British noble person. The second is Quincy Morris, who is an American from Texas specifically, and he is romanticized as being very like wild and full of possibility and new life, kind of like America. And then Dr. Seward, who runs an insane asylum. And then they bring in his mentor and teacher, Van Helsing, psychologist, metaphysician, philosopher, vampire hunter, Bay. Step four is views on women, but we'll get to that later. So not only is this book scary AF because of the fantastic writing and characters, it is also the perfect illustration of patriarchal gender roles and the biological essentialism that ensues. Early on in the book, Mina is writing in her journal and she is with Lucy who is sleeping beside her because this is after the day where she'd just been proposed to three times and dealing with men is exhausting. And as she's writing in her journal, she makes reference to the new woman. So she says, Some of the new women writers will someday start an idea that men and women should be allowed to see each other asleep before proposing or accepting. But I suppose the new woman won't condescend in future to accept. She will do the proposing herself, and a nice job she will make of it too. To give you a very brief feminist history lesson, the new woman is an important concept in first wave feminism. So this idea was actually popularized by Henry James in how he wrote his heroines, but the concept actually first appeared in an article by Sarah Garland called 
the new aspect of the woman question. So women or characters that fulfilled the concept of the new women were women who challenged male-dominated society and they exercised control over their own lives, socially, economically, and personally. So a lot of this was actually based on young American women who would come and like hang out in England and they would just travel around, do whatever with their money, and not get married immediately and have children. Because again, first wave feminism, white rich people. So there's reference made to this feminist ideal, and then we have the rest of the book. Why this book is such a good example of patriarchal gender roles is because they literally talk about the man's brain and the woman's brain, especially with Dr. Seward and Van Helsing who bring in the aspects of psychology and science. So this is biological essentialism because you're reducing gender, and there's only two of them, women and men, to their biology. The man brain is presented as the ability to be strong, rational, logical, and courageous in this fight against vampires. And then the woman brain is presented as being nurturing, emotional, physically and mentally fragile, innocent and pure and unable to participate in the fight against evil unless they be corrupted, which would be the worst thing in the world. So this is why the character of Mina is fascinating, because she has the most agency out of any character. So she starts off just as Jonathan Harker's like fiance person and she's very concerned and caring for him, but then she gets more and more involved in the fight against evil as embodied by Dracula, the newfound sh** disturber of England, and she gets posited as the exception to the woman brain man brain rule. So when Van Helsing is talking to her he says, Ah, that wonderful Madame Mina, she has a man's brain, a brain that a man should have were he much gifted, and a woman's heart. So as she gets more involved, she starts doing basical, basical, <laughs> qualified to be talking about things on YouTube. So as she gets more involved, she starts doing like basic logical thinking. Thinking? I just said basical and thinking. So as she starts to get more involved, she starts exercising some like basic logical thinking, which was just like mind blowing for a woman to do apparently at the time. In terms of just like getting them from A to B, looking up like train times, just like basic details that no one had thought of yet. But then she also holds the position in the group of being their emotional keeper. Possessing a female brain and a female heart leads to a life of quietly going around and absorbing all of the men's emotions. So all of the men in the group have experienced traumatic events, and they all have a lot of emotions and feelings that they're working through. But Mina is the only person that it's acceptable to open up to. So there will be parts in the book where there is Mina and two of the male characters in a room and one of them will start to become visibly upset and the other one will leave so that Mina can heal him because that's her job to emotionally support all of the men. So not only is she the only person who considers things like logistics and how they're gonna get places, she is also this vessel that has to consume all of the men's emotions while she's dealing with her own. In conclusion, Mina Harker is a badass bitch. Another thing that gets brought up in this book is the idea of hysteria. This concept was very popular in the Victorian era as a way to further explain women's irrationality and weak-mindedness and a way to further subjugate them as people. This is something that is again brought up by Dr. Seward and Van Helsing, especially whenever they're just like talking about women in general. But then Van Helsing goes through what's actually described as a hysterical fit but it's seen as a legitimate response to a traumatic event, whereas anytime Mina gets slightly upset about anything, they're like, she's gonna be hysterical, we gotta stop, guys. This is, this is hysteria, this is gonna, hysteria. It's gonna happen. Like, fight me, Van Helsing. But then, also teach me philosophy. <laughs> I look like an actual ghost. I need to check that white balance.